We got our soul. Ah, I love that song, man. I love that song. Look who we got in the house. Lee Camp, man. We camp What's in up? person. We camp in person, man. What about that song, man? So they got their money, but we got our souls. Do we really? I mean, I like some money, man. How about you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, mean it's, ide- ideally, we'd have both, right? <laughs> you know, it's it's like shit, man. Fucking, you know, soul. You got soul, but you. That, that brings me up to the. You know, I watched your um, your piece on Bernie Sanders last night. It was really, really good. Really, I wanted to talk about. Um, thanks for coming on, by the way. I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, so, if you don't know who Lee Camp is, Lee Camp is the uh, is a uh, comedian, a journalist. I don't know what he calls. But what uh, are you a comedian or a journalist? What do you? What do I, you? I, I'd say comedian first, but uh, a lot of people call me a journalist because when your mainstream media sucks ass, people turn to uh, the right. the other sources. That's amazing, right? The com- we turn to comedians for for news, and and we turn to news for comedy. <laughs> really, right? Yeah, sort of, yeah. Right? It's crazy yeah. shit, man. So let's um. So Bernie Sanders last uh, uh, last week he he rolled out this uh, this economic um, economic bill of rights. Wow, fucking economic bill of rights, man. It's just heavy, right? I, like you can't be free, you can't be free unless you're unless you have money, right? Unless you have your you know your basic basic income, right? Because if you're working a yeah. hundred hours a week, right? How how could you you know? Well, if you're working you know sixty hours a week. You scrape and buy, you know. You, you 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 don't have time. You don't even know what your kids look like anymore. Uh, that's that's kind of what he's painting uh, the picture, right, Sanders? Well, and he's making the important point that uh, e- economic freedom is freedom. So if you and exactly what you're saying, if you are tied down to uh, you know a job you hate your entire life in order to uh, to make ends meet in order to uh, afford even a, a you know m- mid-level life and apartment and food then you're not that's not freedom that's not you know i think a lot of capitalists uh, unfettered capitalists out there would call that freedom but that's not freedom if you you know if you're signing up to do things you don't want to do in order to uh, pay for college such as military or or sex work or whatever uh that's not freedom either so I think he's uh, he's making important points, and, and as I say in the in the piece on Redacted tonight, that I'm not I'm, I didn't do it as some sort of infomercial for Bernie Sanders. Right. It's about the ideas, and if other candidates, if other people in third parties or wherever want to talk about these ideas, then I'll I'll talk about it with them too. Isn't it isn't it profound? Like you know, you watch the Trump rally, and you see it's like it's like watching wrestling. It's like it's like you yeah. know it's you know it's kind of like it's fake. But there's, you know, there's fifty thousand, you know, good American people in there cheering on the cheering on Hulk Hogan, you know, and yep. and and you kind of know it, you know, I know it's fake, you know, it's fake, and I think a lot of the people in the audience, he goes through one platitude after the, uh, another. The economy has never been so good. Uh, yeah. uh, look at us, look, you know, we're we're we're, we're the the economies are booming. People are working. Blacks and Hispanics have never been so, you know, and he, and he cites the fake unemployment number, 3.7%, when it's probably around 20%. Uh, it's like, how, how do you, my point is, how do you, how do you explain that? Because people that are going to watch this, they're going to say, ah, oh, fucking two liberal long haired motherfuckers, right? Yeah. And they're going to, and they're going to say, they're going to say, um, they're going to say that they're going to, they're going to chop it up. And how do you, how do you speak to the, to the, uh, the Trump tried and true, who believe that it's all about? Oh, you got to get rid of that deep state. Oh, you got to get rid of the sw- drain the swamp. Uh, 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 but uh, but really, well, I got think room. I think I think it was easier for him. I mean, I mean, I I don't know what his what his real numbers are versus you know shitty polling that doesn't really add up or whatever. I don't know what his real numbers are, but I, I think it's a lot easier for him to sell that message the first time around. When he said, "I'm going to drain the swamp. I'm going to pull back our military adventures overseas," and he hasn't done any of it. He drained the swamp and replaced it with more swamp, even worse swamp. So you know, he was he was surrounding himself with with Goldman Sachs for his economic advisors and and military uh, military people for his uh, for his you know chief of staff and advisors and and so it was like, what? How is that draining the swamp? That's the that's the polar opposite of what he ran around saying. So you know, if these people even do. I'm just talking a base level of looking whether he's actually done what he said he was going to do. The answer is no. He hasn't helped the American worker. He hasn't. He's, he gave a giant tax cuts to corporations and the wealthiest people. So, 
you know, I think it's a lot easier to say that when you've never been in office. But once you've been in office, people see what you can do. Uh, you know, hopefully some of these people have noticed that this is not the promises that, that, that they were given the first time around. And a lot of people that, you know, supported Bernie Sanders then switched over to Trump last time around. Uh, so, you know, these aren't all just... Uh, uh, you know, died in the wool Trump supporters. I think there there are a lot of people that voted for him that that could be uh, could be kind of talked out of it, given some given some rational facts. And and you know what you're talking about with the the unemployment numbers. It's like yeah, if you look at the unemployment numbers, they are very low. In fact, the lowest they've been in decades and decades. They consider it full employment here in the U.S. Well, the reason is because we all so many people have shit jobs. There, people are working two, three jobs. People have jobs they hate. People are, uh, you know, being completely exploited. So yeah, they're employed, but they're not happy. There's, you know, tons of depression in our country, and and people are just being exploited. Yeah, no, it's no doubt, man. It's just, I mean, it's crazy. It's you know, I do this on a daily basis, and I, you try to talk to people, and you try to. Uh, Try to understand, you know, how what is the what is the attraction there with Trump? What is how how? I mean, it's fun. It's he's entertaining. He's a, I get that part of it. It's very entertaining. Well, there and there and there actually is a lot of truth. He he's he's both the biggest liar we've ever seen and and telling a lot of truth that your cor your corporate politicians won't tell. Um, you know, he does at times criticize our, you know, uh, endless military overseas, or he uh, will go after our mainstream media, which is a pile of shit. So it's like, and, and that made him ring true to a lot of people. People saw that and they said, wow, this guy's actually speaking to me. He's actually saying these things that I know are true. But then you look at all the lies he's telling and it, it, yeah. it doesn't add up. I mean, he is a quintessential con man. A, a con man knows how to give you some truths that you really uh, want to hear and really understand and then mix it in with the lies he needs you to believe right hey check this out let me play this clip to see if you can um i don't i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it but here's bernie sanders he's um uh anderson cooper uh interviewed him right after he gave that the uh economic speech the uh economic bill of rights speech just listen to what he says about corporate corporate socialism this is fascinating he talks more about about that freedom, that freedom theme that we just talked about. How could you be free if you work in ten jobs? But he also finally makes the the point that we have socialism in this country, but it's it's corporate socialism. It's it's so. Just listen to him. I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, just listen. I mean, you are clearly you trying to sort of explain what your view of what that means to uh, you know an American population and many people who see here the socialism part, maybe not the democratic part. And you know President Trump ultimately will be yelling Venezuela at you as much as possible. Yeah. Well, that's, that's exactly the point. And the other point that I made today is that, in fact, people like Donald Trump are also socialists, except they are corporate socialists. They are prepared and do provide hundreds of billions of dollars every single year in subsidies and tax breaks to large corporations and the wealthy. Anderson, you will remember very well the Wall Street bailout. Now, Wall Street is the epitome of unfettered capitalism. That's what they believe. Except when their greed and illegal behavior nearly destroyed the economy, they went begging to the Congress. They were big-time socialists, and they said, we need federal help. Give us $700 billion from the Treasury and trillions of dollars in low-interest loans from the Federal Reserve. You got the fossil fuel industry today which is literally destroying the planet. And they get billions of dollars in subsidies and tax breaks. You have Amazon, owned by the wealthiest person in this country, Jeff Bezos, made $11 billion last year. That's what Amazon made in profits. They didn't pay a nickel in federal income taxes. So in fact, you got Donald Trump himself, as part of his housing endeavors, received tens and tens of millions of dollars in subsidies and tax breaks. So, so you do have socialism in this country, except as Martin Luther King reminded us, it's socialism for the very rich and unfettered individualism for the poor. Right? I mean, it's, like, yeah. it's yeah. just, it's like, uh, it's profound and 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 accurate and deep. And uh, I mean, how do you, how, how if, if the Democrats pick Bernie Sanders, right? Because, of course, we don't have free and fair elections. They're picking picking a candidate. But if could you imagine, just for just, just a second, imagine 
Bernie Sanders with that message standing next to Trump, I, I mean, it, doesn't it just, just doesn't it just eviscerate him just saying saying socialist, saying uh, uh, of Venezuela? I, I mean, it's just. Yeah, I mean, you know, you'd like to think that Americans would understand that, that the Venezuela claim is ridiculous. But, uh, it, it, you know, and, and, what, and what Bernie Sanders is not saying, because he, you know, wants to keep being invited on these shows, is that, is that the, you know, people like Anderson Cooper and CNN and MSNBC and Fox News, they have all, their, their job is to promote this endless corporate socialism. Their job is to make Americans okay with just you know, loading trillions and trillions of dollars uh, upon the the wealthiest Americans who are, you know, held up like some sort of example. I mean, whether it's Bezos or Steve Jobs or Bill Gates, they're they're held up as this is how this is what you want to become in this country is is you know someone who's got so much money that they could end homelessness the world over with a snap of their fingers, but they're not going to. And they, they really they should not be. We should not hold them up as our betters and our leaders. We should shouldn't uh, be excited that all these corporations are, are quote-unquote, doing well while we dump trillions at their feet and don't have them pay taxes. And, you know, CNN is never going to discuss that. They're never going to mention it. Bernie, you got to have a rare interview with Bernie Sanders to have something like that said on the air. Um, so... Trump has done very well for a lot of uh, a lot of the the ruling elite. Uh, you, while you, while you and me and and uh, so many people talk about what a d- disaster you know his ideas are and everything, he's done very well for a lot of them. And so, you, while I, I think a lot of people say you know just anything other than Trump. I think the ruling elite are like, well, he's not he's not that bad for our situation here. Wall Street's kind of loving him. Hmm. No doubt, man. Yeah. So. So, so uh, I don't even know what I want to say. So, so we'll talk about Julian Assange too. But um, yeah, yeah, it is, it is a, uh, it is a, it's, it's very profound. I, I mean, when you hear, when you hear Sanders spell it out like that, you, you know, you want to say, you want to say, how doesn't the average American get it? Why doesn't it click that, that the, the entire uh, oligarchy, the entire monopoly, is working against them? That well, the, you know, they're they're you know, told it's a monopoly. To, it, it means it's you're sitting at the monopoly table. And I'm playing against you, and I got all the houses and all the car, all the all the <laughs> hotels. I got the stacks of money, right? And you got nothing. You got you, you're holding on with one dollar. Well, and you know what they, what they do is they they you're tell people to hate. People. They tell people to hate something that is not the cause of their problems. So okay. in the right wing with the Republicans, they say hate the immigrants, hate people who aren't the same skin color as you. Those are the ones causing you the problem, when of course that's bullshit. And then on the Democratic side, they're saying, hey, Russia, Russia's the one that's causing all your problems, when of course that's bullshit. So both sides are of our ridiculous two-party system are telling people, ignore the reality that all of the wealth and the resources have been extracted to a tiny number of individuals. Ignore that reality and just get angry at the great other, whether it's the other on the border or the other in this country or Iran or North Korea. Just get mad at the other. Don't look at us. Don't look at the ruling elite. Yeah, this is the same exact swamp. I mean, I mean, he 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 picked Pompeo. He's got Pompeo. He's got John Bolton. He's got yep. Steve Mnuchin running. We got Goldman yep. Sachs running the Treasury. Yep. Uh, they did. They, you know, it's the same as Geithner in, in two thousand eight. Now you got Mnuchin, right? How? how I mean. How stupid, right? But um, it, I mean, it's hard to explain to people. I mean, I try my best, you know. Like, like a, if you have a, if you have fifty billion dollars, right? Or you got, you know, you got Bezo money, right? Hundred billion dollars, and or is it? Yeah, it's a hundred billion dollars, right? And and you couldn't spend that in ten lifetimes. So what you do mm, is ninety five percent of it you park it, right? Yep. But if you give me a hundred grand, or I give you a hundred grand. You're going to spend all of it. You're going to spend it. You're going to be, you're going to enjoy your right. life and you might even go into a little debt. You'll spend 100% of your money. And that's what, um, I guess it was, it, uh, what was that dude? Fucking Chris Hayes, Chris, uh, Hedges. Chris Hedges. <laughs> he said, talks about velocity of money, right? So, so why don't, why couldn't people understand that, right? So uh, here's the other thing about socialism. See if you think I'm, uh, uh if you can add to it, but socialism I'm kind of tired right now. I'm just trying to. I'm, I'm trying to wake up. So socialism for socialism 
for the I forgot what I was gonna say. Fucking yeah, God damn man. So so let's talk about comedy, man. So how do you how do you how, do you do you rather be a comic or you rather be a journalist? Like you get groupies and shit. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah. um, you know, I, I started out wanting to just be a comedian. I, I When I was young, I just wanted to be a comedian. I just wanted to write humor. And, and then uh, as I was doing it, I, I lived in New York and, uh, you know, toured the country, played colleges, did comedy clubs every night of the week. And so I, I did that for 15 years. And and my stuff became a little more political here and there. But eventually I just realized, you know, I wanted to talk about these issues. And, and then, you know, Occupy popped off. And it was mm. – uh, I just – the, the more I kind of educated myself on what was going on in this world, the more I wanted to talk about that stuff rather than just talking about, you know, uh, how silly Tinder is or something. Uh, you know, dogs and cats are different. And so it, it just kind of grew out of that. And, and, you know, like I said before, if we had an actual media that was actually doing its job in this yeah. country, people wouldn't turn to me to learn facts about the news. But instead, you know, I, I and, and a few others are, are the ones that are lucky enough to have a, a TV show talking about the real issues, talking about uh, how, how much crap our mainstream media is and our two-party system is. And, and uh, I think that's why people are attracted to Redacted Tonight. Right, right. Well, you guys are getting paid by Russia, right? Isn't it? Do you get paid in rubles and shit like that? <laughs> yeah, rubles and Russian hookers. We get a lot of Russian hookers. Sometimes I'll just have a pile of them here. What's uh, happened to you, right? You're at a show, right? Lee, come on, tell me about it. You're at a show, right? And you, I've, and you, never, you, I've never had a hooker, no. No, no, not a hooker, <laughs> but, but you're at a show, right? And, and, and you, blow, you, knock, you knock the doors off the, off the place, right? People are going crazy, right? And a young 20-something-year-old chick comes up there and says, they say, hey, Lee, that was a great show. Uh, you want to fuck? <laughs> right, that shit happens, right? I'll, I'll plead the fifth. All right, uh, let's talk about. Let's talk about. Go de- about, take a deep dive into uh, Julian Assange. You you did a great piece. You talked about. Uh, you put eighteen of his facts together. Uh, you put all the yeah. shit, all the things that that this guy did. Right, and right now he's sitting in jail, in England for telling the truth. Right, yep. and someday what we're doing right here to speaking truth, uh, is is on the verge of becoming illegal. Right, is that that's kind of what's going on. Right, so. Assange collateral murder video. We've all seen it, right? He did the Guantanamo Bay. He did. He, he told us about Scientology. You told us that he told us about this. The Tibetan descendants in China fighting back. China was saying, "No, no, no. They, they like it. They like it." <laughs> right? I uh, yeah, lines. yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I just put together the you know eighteen things that WikiLeaks biggest things that WikiLeaks has revealed, and they're massive. You know, it's it's everything from war logs to war crimes to to trade deals that no one's allowed to see. To I mean, these are all things that journalists should be scrambling to tell us about, but they're not. And WikiLeaks, by the way, WikiLeaks has never, ever published something that was proven to be false. Right. Compare that record to CNN or Fox News or MSNBC. They publish false shit all the time. I covered, the other day I covered how the New York Times was saying that a you know top North Korean diplomat had been assassinated. And then the next day people see him walking around on the streets. So it's it's like that's that's what's going on at our mainstream media, and WikiLeaks, meanwhile, 100 percent accurate. And Julian Assange is sitting in jail for the crime of basically telling us the truth. We have we have basically literally shot the messenger, and now they they you know the U.S. has finally thrown off the gloves and and taken down the the facade, and they have. Brought 17 espionage charges against him for publishing material. This is a publisher, and this is uh, you know. And suddenly, the New York Times and Washington Post and Rachel Maddow and all these uh, idiots that have been running around saying Julian Assange should be you know drone bombed, they suddenly did a 180 and realized this is dangerous for journalism to bring espionage charges against journalists is really dangerous to them, to New York Times, Washington Post, all these. You know, tools that have been uh, going after Assange, suddenly they realized, hey, this is bad for us. So even they have suddenly come on board and said that these charges against Assange are, are, are just hideous. And, you know, they are, it's an Orwellian uh, uh, dystopia to charge journalists with espionage. I mean, he should be released right now. He's already spent seven years in, in confinement. Sure. Sure. You think he'll, do you think they'll, ex- they'll uh, extradite him to the U.S.? Do you think he'll ever make it here? I don't know. It's a tough thing for Britain because Britain obviously wants to bend over backwards to do everything for the U.S., but at the same time, they know that this is a, a, a bad precedent to set with journalists around the world being, you know, ex- 
extradited. And let's remember, Assange is not an American citizen and has never been published from America, so he has no connection to America, other than that America doesn't like what he said. I mean, imagine if we could just extradite everybody we didn't like something they said around the world to be tortured here in America. I mean, that is a true dystopia. So I think England, England is, in a, is, a, is in a rough spot because they want to bend over backwards for America, but this is a terrible precedent to set. Right. So going forward, right, let's talk about the election, right? 2020, right? If we could call it an election. Now, we saw grotesque, you know, uh, election rigging, uh, gerrymandering, shutting down polling places right here in Brooklyn alone, 200,000, yep. you know, voters purged off the rolls, right? Hillary Clinton cheating, cheating, lying, cheating, stealing, but that's the emails. They showed us the whole, WikiLeaks showed us the whole thing. We know exactly the, the mythology of the, the mythology of the cheating. We saw Jared Beck in, in Florida prove in a court of law, got the DNC lawyers to say it, to mm -hmm. say in a court of law that we picked the candidate. Why, yeah, why they should, said they have the right to rig the elections. Huh? They have the right. So why should we? Why should we? Why should we continue? Shouldn't we? What? What? What's the move forward? Right. I mean, certainly not. I mean, I might have gave Bernie Sanders a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars last time around, but damn straight, if I'm going to send in even ten cents, you know, yeah. this time. So what? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do we? How do we move towards a free and fair election? You know, what, what yeah, absolutely, and I'm sorry I do have to go after this one, but uh, I, I think that the the answer is to yes, you should still vote because it can matter on local issues, it can matter in certain things that aren't as rigged, and it, voting's like turning on your uh, turn signal uh, when you're in the car. It's something you do. It's not going to change the world. It's just something you do, and so you should vote, but voting do, should not be what is really, if you really want to be active, you really want to care about our society, it's got to happen on so many levels, you know, both in, in local ways and in national ways, and we need to stand up for issues. And basically, on the, on the important things in this country, the Congress, our ruling elite, the oligarchy, they need to be dragged kicking and screaming to what the people want. They will never, and a Princeton study showed this, they will never do what the people want unless they are truly forced there. So, and you see this again and again with civil rights, with uh, w women voting, with uh, gay marriage. It had to have legalizing marijuana. It had to happen across the country and eventually push the federal level to allow it. So basically, that's where the action needs to take place. And and we all need to stand up and and you know get getting money out of politics is another one that's kind of happening a little here and there, state by state. And maybe one day we could get it to be a national thing because our our elections are completely bought off. Even if they weren't rigged, they're bought off. The candidate that spends the most wins over 80 percent of the time it's a completely bought off system and uh and like you said they haven't changed any of the rigging they the only thing they did is they got rid of two-thirds of super delegates but that's only for the first vote so at the convention they can just push it to a second vote all the super delegates are involved again so they really just made it worse i mean they, they, they haven't dnc hasn't fixed it at all it's as rigged as ever and uh and and i think people need to stand up on so many ways so voting is Something to do, but our system right now is such a catastrophe. It's rated by a Harvard study as the worst in the Western world for voting. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. Wow, definitely, man. So, you know, when they tell us Joe Biden, we tell them, wow, we tell them, forget about it, right? Forget <laughs> it. It's just, Absolutely. That's you know, like it should sound, another, man. Another neocon, neoliberal shit stain. Yeah, man. All right, I'll let you go, Lee. Thank you very much for dropping by, man. Thanks. Hey, I wish I could get you hey, something, man. Maybe a bottle of water or something. Hey, some drinks, <laughs> Maybe thanks, next time, man. Hey, so what are you, what are you doing? What, you want to plug something? What, what's, uh, what's, up, what's coming, man? What's coming up in the... Yeah, and, well, and, well, first of all, thanks for having me, and uh, I, I do live touring, so I'm coming to a lot of cities coming up, and that's all at LeeCamp.com, but uh, people, I just ask people to check out the TV show, give it a chance, it's called Redacted Tonight, it's on YouTube, it's on DirecTV, and uh, it's you, know, you find it on YouTube under Redacted Tonight, but if you forget all that, just go to LeeCamp.com. All right, Lee, thank you so much, man. Peace out, thank, man. Thank you, man. Have a good day. Ah, Lee. Damn, that's fucking Lee Camp, man. That's fucking Lee Camp. <laughs> that's pretty cool, right? Lee Camp's Lee Camp's the man, man. Right? I wanted to ask him more about. I wanted to ask him more about, like, you know, because I know he gets pussy, right? I know, I know Lee Camp. Like, he he's <laughs> he's fucking good looking dude, right? He's got his hair out. He's got his, he's got he's doing his comedy. He's in the comedy club, man. Fucking chicks come up to him, rubbing up and shit, saying, "Hey, man, what's up?" 
But really, is a be beyond uh, beyond that is great mind, great mind, right? We need more people like that. We need more people to to uh, stand up and and uh, everybody should have a YouTube channel. Why not, man? Have everybody I mean, that's a fucking YouTube channel, right? And uh, and and speak your truth, right? Uh, that's I mean, it's not a, it's not a, an unusual uh, venture. I mean, comic comics and comedians have a long history of you know of uh, of uh, mixing politics and comedy, right? You know, it's not it's not something new, right? It's, it's certainly like me. I'm mixing. I don't know what, right? But I'm I'm a horrible interviewer. I apologize, you know. But I fucking I find people very interesting. I find what what Lee, you know, I, my thing is just I talk into the camera, and that's my thing. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, when other people are involved, it's, it makes it it makes it a different equity. But you have to listen to other people. I I admire. I admire people like that. Not not like, you know, phony balonies running around on the internet trying to, you know, whip up conspiracy theories and chase the next stupid story, right? But actual people that are talking about issues that that matter to people in a passionate way. It's not just talking about it, but actually actually believe uh believe in that, you know, believe in the helping people out. And I think Lee Camp is definitely one of them. So check it out, man. So he's, it's, it's good stuff, man. It's, uh, it's redacted tonight. It's, uh, it's RT. It's, you know, allegedly the Russian government. I don't know, man. Fucking shit is crazy. Uh, Marks Conte reporting. If you want to drop me a bone, throw a tip in the tip jar. There it is right there, man. Marks Conte reporting.